Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, that's the Ramble. It's Alex. That's me. We'll be here until midnight tonight on the East Coast of the United States of America. Ah, there he is. Now, if he looks, that's Stephen Pearl, by the way. Oh, wait a minute. You know what I didn't do, Stephen? Me do. I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't put up your um, your. Uh, uh, your 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 little uh, text, so that you can. There we go. See, then everybody can know who you are. Oh, see? there we are. See, right, right on me, right yeah. There. Anyway, hey, how come the P isn't capitalized? What is this? Chop liver? The, that ain't right. The, Come P, on, capitalize the, the, P. the P is capitalized, and it's all the way over on the other right side of the screen. No, you're pointing at me. You have to go over to the other side of the screen. There, there, now, I, now you're pointing. Oh, the bouncing finger boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's all on this side here. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Hey. New York State Thruway's closed, man. Why do you? whole city. I was rapping to the fuzz. I was, how you doing? How you doing? Uh, so uh, you're very peppy because, uh, what was it, two days ago you uh, had a little procedure? Oh, no, that was last, a week ago today. A week ago that today. Was, I don't know. I, all I know is I went onto your page and there you were uh, wearing a mask. Yeah, in the hello, hospital. In the hospital, in the hospital. Summerlin Hospital, a fine organization. Now, hello, what, everyone in Summerlin. Now, why did you go there? Why? What? What, what were you in? What, uh, it's like saying he came back from prison. What were you in for? <laughs> I had nipple augmentation. Everyone's doing it. No, uh, <laughs> I had. Uh, I have. I've had AFib of the heart for about ten years, and it sucks. And I didn't want to get a stroke, so. I finally had it worked on, and hopefully I don't have it anymore. So there and, you go. And, and what do they do for the AFib? They go in there and they just tickle your heart or something? or they, Yeah, they uh, they put you out, first of all. They, they put a tube down your throat. It better have been a tube. I don't want to wake up and my butt hurts, and the doctor's pulling up his pants and smiling, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but uh, and they go up your groin with two catheters, and you're out for the whole thing. And they, I don't know, they go up there and they spot weld on the heart or something. I don't know what they do, but I haven't had an episode since. So the only thing, the only complaint I have is it itches where they shaved me. Oh. But other than that, and they didn't shave all of me, so my pubic hair looks like a little Hitler mustache. It, well, no, it, 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 I it, 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 goes, see, hey! <laughs> my penis is a Nazi, help! The worst thing, I, th- I, I don't know this because I've never, I've never done it, but I've heard that having, you're, you're shaving your pubic hair and then having it grow back is it's not, yeah, it's it's not, not fun. because you, not it's not that it's not fun it's just that you <laughs> got to scratch it where it itches and then you're walking around scratching your crotch everywhere you go and yeah people, you know the way it ain't nothing man people shit. have an attitude about that yeah, yeah. you know so it's uh, while, it, while it grows back uh that was but there was no uh, post-op pain at all yeah. and it was great i told the anesthetic the anesthesiologist what you can do anything you want to me as long as you make me feel like rip van winkle or keith richards so uh, he said, I'm going to make you feel like Keith for two seconds, then you're going to feel like Rip, and then you'll wake up. <laughs> That's why Keith smiles all the time. But yeah. they put, I don't even remember going out, man. I just remember coming to. They put something in my there wrist. Is, there is one second, one millisecond before you go under that's a wonderful quick high. Uh, yeah, when I was in the hospital in L.A., they gave me the Keith Richards drugs, and I didn't want them to wear off. Ooh, the lauded. Well, Whoa. you know what they did with me? When I had my... my seeds implanted in my prostate which uh, have now taken root by the way and i'm growing an oak tree in my ass oh, if you know 10 people you can sell these seeds but you. anyway when they did the seeds thing uh, uh it, it was um uh now what was the point i was going to make you made they put seeds oh, in your prostate oh, 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 oh they couldn't they couldn't right. yeah they couldn't put me out because they said really? because of your age we don't want to put you out Oh fuck that! Put me out, no matter. You know, what. and I and went, that. but but you know, this is going to be. Oh, no, no. Don't worry about it. We're going to give you a spinal. Now you've heard of spinals before, right? Yeah, sure. Where they somehow do something in your spine, which then kills everything from your uh, below your waist. Uh huh. All right. And I'm going. Well, this okay. 
this this is gonna hurt, right? And they did it, and it didn't hurt at all. It did a little, it little, it a little pressure, that was it. And next thing I know, they're like moving me around because I can't. Uh -huh. And he says, uh, and now to make it even more fun, I'm gonna give you some uh, Valium or whatever uh -huh. and uh, make you feel real pleasant. Well, that was like being high constantly. Uh, I, yeah. And it really, if I had my choice now between getting put out or getting a spinal and getting this stuff, I would do this. Plus, oh, yeah. you get to hear everybody in the operating room talking to each other while they're yeah. doing the procedure. And you think they're going to go, scalpel, sutures, <laughs> give me another glove, nurse, wipe my brow. No, it's like, so what are you doing for dinner tonight? Uh, yeah. And he's in there, my he's in my ass, you know. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> yeah. not my ass, he's actually... Like the nature of them, yeah. Actually, they stick a... A needle. You ready, folks? Uh, get ready to wince. You know your perineum? You know what your perineum is? We uh, used to call it the taint. Uh -huh. Taint, ass, taint, genitals. It's the yeah. in-between area. Right? Oh, my God. Was, and they go in there with a needle. And then they do everything through there to amazing. get to your prostate. Yeah. But I didn't feel a thing. And the no, guy no, is no. doing it. And I'm high as a kite. And they're talking to each other. And I'm hearing everything. Uh -huh. You know, the only terrible part about it was that after it was over, they took me into the, you know, recovery room. Uh -huh. And it took me longer to recover than the guy next to me because he was put out. Me, uh -huh. I had to wait for the bottom half of my body to start working. And <laughs> yeah, that, that took about that, that took about three hours. Wow. Yeah, it took me a while for the drugs to wear off, and I had no problem with it. Well, I have a friend who's a paraplegic, and I always wondered what that was like. And now I know, because, I mean, I you just don't feel anything below your waist. Uh, yeah, can't move, nothing. Yeah. Are... But, uh, so I didn't I, I didn't get put out, and I was looking forward to getting put out, because I liked the drug they put you out with. Yeah. But And I didn't like the idea of being awake while this was going on, but yeah. he gave me so much of that Valium that I didn't give a crap. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, they knew what they were doing. Okay. They know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't but, put me out for my hernia operation. I was awake. I just didn't feel nothing. That was in 1980, folks. And uh, I went to the hospital 40 years later, and this time they put me out. I thought I would just enjoy the part of just going out, but I don't remember it. I just remember. Well, oh, it, there's, a, there's a momentary flash, if you pay attention to it, where you get this <laughs> meep, and then yep. <laughs> you come out of the other side of that meep, and yep. you're awake. Yep, that was it. I remember the the awake beep. I don't remember the going out beep. Yeah, but the, uh, they're they're very. It's very you know. It's very good. It's terrific. Yeah, but you, but you, I have no post op pain. They did a great job. Well, as long oh, as we're talking about operations, I have a hernia. I have a hernia, but I haven't done anything about it because it uh -huh. isn't bothering me. Yeah, it's not bothering me. Mine was mine looked like I had three balls, so I had to do something. Well, about no, it. I have a lump, but it's it's not. You know, it doesn't hurt. Doesn't oh, bother me. Good. You know, and they say if it doesn't bother you, then don't worry about it. You know? Yeah, mine was killing me, so and, uh, you know, I couldn't have sex when I came. So how long did it take you to get over that? Because I hear that's a, that the recovery on that is long. That took a long time. That's, I was all purple and shaved and hurt, and it just hurt to walk and it hurt to breathe, and that was that was horrible. Really? And, uh, yeah, I was I younger and more delicate. They then. must be better at it now, though. Yeah, I, well, yeah, they had some new method they did with me, like one muscle over and over, so it doesn't come back and has but. Uh, Ooh, it sucked. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, uh, oh, yeah, let's see. Who else? Who? Else? Oh, oh, Bubs has a hernia. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. And uh, he said he should get it taken care of, but he doesn't want to go do it. And I yeah. said that's the kind of thing you just don't do unless you absolutely have to do it. Yeah. You know. My strangulated, so it had to be taken. Oh, care it was of. strangulated. Oh, that's it was, not good. It was added from 1969 to 1980. Like, it that was long painful, long. I would imagine. Well, it was not good. It was not good. It was just sometimes the pain would just kick in. I go, I'd rather be kicked in the balls with a baseball bat and a nail through it. Well, if you ever want to do that, just call me and I'll be no, happy to, okay. to no do problem. it for you. So you're, so you're feeling, you don't look like you even were in the hospital. Ah, the, the, the beautiful uh, chair of face of mine. Yeah, my car's broken. I'm getting that fixed next week. So how often, house. how often did you get the fibrillation? No. Oh, I've had, oh God, it, it, I might get it once a month or I might get it five days in a row. It just kicked in. If I got excited or mad or for no reason at all, it would just kick in and it sucked. It's so you can, you can't breathe. You can hardly walk. You got to pee every two seconds. It's horrendous. And, uh, 
It broke when my air conditioner broke down in July for eight days. Eight days. I was living on the sun. It's like 150 degrees here every day. And it kicked in the second day. And I was crawling to the kitchen to get buckets of water to pour over myself. That bad, I, huh? How bad? It was bad. It was bad. Yeah, it was I don't have any AFib or anything like that. In fact, as a matter of fact, I think about it. My uh, my, I, I have a, a slight um, what 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 do they call it? Oh, uh, 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 my my aortic stenosis. That's it. Oh, that okay. Which means I'm amazed I remembered it. Okay, and <laughs> I it, had it, 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 which is a hardening of the of the of the uh, of the aorta, uh -huh. but uh, my doctor did a thing on me, and he looked uh -huh. at it, and he went, and then he did it again a couple of months, about a year later, two years later, to see if, how much it had grown. He said, at this rate, you'll be 150 before it's a problem. Uh -huh. okay, yeah. cool. So that's the most I have wrong with my heart is an aortic stenosis. Uh, -huh. uh wow. he okay. did, you know, and he does this echocardiogram and he looks at it and goes, That's a little bit more plaque and everything's nothing. He says, Don't worry about it, yeah. you know. Okay, cool. Well, you're 150, call me, so you know, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's just nice to get something taken care of. So, you know, I haven't had it, it's been a week ago, and so far, nothing's happened. The so, problem you know. with that is, I, I'm planning to make it to 150. Oh, so, gosh, so there you go. I might have to have the operation. You're going to bury everyone you know. It's not a good feeling. That's right? right. That's right. Well, we're everyone. burying a lot of people. We Oh, more than half of my friends are on the other side, and some of them were younger than me. You know, and you're great. how old now? You're 60? I'm 64. Get 64. off my mind, you bastards. Give me back my copy of the Long Island Press. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, uh, you're 64, so to have oh. people going... Isn't uh, as much as like me. They they go left and oh, yeah. right. You're you know? way up there. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, they're yeah. they're just they're just dropping like flies. You haven't uh, been the same since your buddy James Knox Oak died. Now, the funny part about it is, comedians. I think we talked about this once before. Comedians have a tendency to live either really long uh -huh. or really short. That's right. That's right. You're either George Burns or Bill Hicks. You know, yeah, other. or you're you're Sam Kinison or you're you know Carl Reiner. You know, yeah, just never know. who just went. That's how you live depends. Who knows? Uh, but so far, I'm too old to die young. So you know. What is it though about comedy that makes these guys live to be older? Is there some we some we element? Huh? We're nuts. We're, we're nuts and we're psycho and we're depressed, but we laugh a lot. And could, laughter is a good release. Good it, could it be one other thing? And and, and I, I, I present this to you is that it's something you can keep doing. It's not something that age stops you from doing. Yeah, that's right. You know, you know um, it's just, it's look weird rocking and rolling when you're 80, but you know, you can get up there. Let me tell you about my daughter in law. If it weren't for the coronavirus, you'd be working right now. I'd be right? working, I'd be somewhere. Doing yeah. Something. And yeah. if worse came to worse and now you're 80 years old, there's always a cruise ship. Somewhere. I know. Put me put the Jew on the cruise ship. Yeah. Waiting for a Jew sounds like he's from the Catskills. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, old Jews go to die in Miami and old comics go to die in Vegas and I had a choice, so I came to Las Vegas. Yeah, well I would I would choose Vegas off of oh, over oh, yeah. Miami. Oh I hated Miami. You don't like Miami? Oh. I like Florida. I'm not crazy about Well, Miami. liking Florida is one thing. Liking yeah. Miami is another altogether. Yeah. I mean that is just the meanest town I ever lived in. It was uh, like yeah. everybody was coming down off Coke at the same time. Ah, oh, my, yeah, that's where it comes yeah. from. It. Uh, like, uh, it was like it was like the final scene in uh, Goodfellas with the uh, helicopters up above oh, and everything. God, yeah. Him being paranoid. You know, I'm not gay. You know, so. Everybody was living like that. Oh my God, nobody yeah. blinks in Miami. I wonder yeah. why. Yeah, no, I hated Miami. Uh, I don't know if you remember when I went to Miami. I remember you went there for a little time. I, I spent short times there, and I've always had a good time, you know, but uh, I had to spend a, a longer amount of time in Miami. So well, that's I, really nice. That's really yeah. nice. I hate that town. They can go. Ah. They, they could. They could. Uh, I, I, what I was told was with the sea rising, eventually Miami will be underwater. Well, Miami's man-made, isn't it? That whole part of Florida used to be a swamp or something. Well, so it's they... a swamp, but it, what's happening is the oceans are rising, and uh -huh. so the pl first place to get it is going to be Miami, which will be right. completely wiped out and washed out. Right. And that's okay by me. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll move to Fort Lauderdale. Who knew? Yeah, they of, and they hated me on the air down there because I said, you know something? This state just looks like a giant penis to me. I don't know about <laughs> yeah, you. No, 
Mark Venus and Mark Gunn. And I want to know what that vein is that's going up. It's, I think it's called Route 1 or something oh, like that. Alligator yeah. Alley, baby. Yeah, Alligator yeah. Alley. Yeah, and I said, Box and I time. often said that at the very bottom of it are all these little islands that looks like sperm. <laughs> I, I said, what other state doesn't, I mean, it looks just like a penis, doesn't it? <laughs> like a penis and a gun. So, you know, and all the people out. living there are dicks. Well, except for my friend Albert and my uh, another friend of mine as well. I have a couple of friends living down there, and they're okay. But why they're living there? Get out of there before it's too late. <laughs> anyway, right to hey, we run out of time already. My God, it's like we just started. Yeah, well, it is. In fact, my we, strong uh, heart it doesn't know what to do. Anyway, we'll talk to you next week. How's that? Okay, my friend. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Pearl. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I love you all. Vote for me, root beer in the water cooler. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that's Stephen Pearl. And uh, we, uh, we put him on tonight. Actually, I did an interview today with Ronnie, which will be on tomorrow night. Uh, but I put him on tonight because I suddenly came across something that I wanted you to hear before we get into the main part of our program tonight. Um, you know, I love Andrew Cuomo. Uh, I, he has saved my life here in New York with his uh, hands-on approach to solving the uh, corona problem. Uh, to a point where we only have just a handful of deaths every day. There are a thousand a day in the United States right now, and here there's anywhere between one and oh four, and that's it. Okay, that's why I love him. Good reason to love him. I also love him because he's a New Yorker, and when he goes after somebody, he really goes after somebody. And I want you to listen to this because he did this just a couple of hours ago. Uh, it's just audio, so I'm going to show a beautiful little picture of him. And, uh, well, you can see what, uh, what he had to say, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, the governor of the great state of New York for about seven minutes is how long it's going to take, okay? And then I think you're going to enjoy it. All right. Let me see here. I, oh, I pushed the button. There. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I wonder what it means when the operator can't uh, pronounce your name. It always happens. Uh, we're joined by Melissa DeRosa, Robert Mejica, and Beth Garvey. Uh, President Trump put out a statement saying that uh, he was uh, wanted to defund the New York City, uh, D.C., Seattle, and uh, Portland <clears throat> uh, because of the uh, protests that they're having uh, and violence in the city. Uh, but you can see his statement for whatever it's worth. Uh, I just want to comment on that. Uh, first, from the point of view of New York City, this has been the worst president in history. President Ford said drop dead. Uh, president Trump has actively been trying to kill New York City ever since he's been elected. Uh, and it's a personal animus, as it normally is with the president. I think it's because he is from New York City, and New York City rejected him, always. Uh, he was uh, dismissed uh, as a clown in New York City. Uh, those who know him best like him least. That's true about New York City. It's true about his own family. Uh, and uh, I think that's more and more clear to Americans. Uh, he's going to deep fund New York City. Everything that he could possibly do in his power to hurt New York City, he has done. Uh, this is an administration that has just arbitrarily and capriciously, and I believe illegally, stopped funding for the Second Avenue subway. Every past administration, Democratic and Republican, funded it uh, as partnership. He stopped it. Uh, he has stopped the air train from uh, LaGuardia Airport to New York City. He's doing an environmental review that is a protracted process and means the airport will be finished 
before the air train is finished. This is a president who has bemoaned the environmental review process and the secret process and all these regulations that government has that stop development. We will build an airport before the president of the United States finishes his environmental review on an air train. I mean, how incredible is that? Uh, he won't approve congestion pricing, which is a technical federal approval matter, but they won't approve congestion pricing. Uh, this is on top of salt, which stole $14 billion from New York. Look, the best thing he did for New York City was leave. Good riddance, let him go to Florida, be careful not to get COVID. Also, what the main situation that New York City had to deal with, uh, that I had to deal with as governor, was the COVID pandemic. Remember, COVID ambushed New York due to Trump's negligence. It was his negligence that allowed the virus to ambush New York. And that's not rhetorical. It was his negligence that believed the virus was still in China because of the China virus. It's not the China virus. It's the European virus. It came here from Europe, January, February, March. He did nothing until March. March 15th is when he did the European travel ban. We know for a fact, says the CDC, his CDC, says Dr. Fauci, we know for a fact the virus came here from Europe January, February, and March. And he missed it. He is the cause of COVID in New York. It is his negligence that brought it here. And then his arrogance, where he won't provide state and local funding uh, to help states and cities uh, to recover from their pandemic that his negligence caused. Uh, he wants to do something about public safety. Here's something that he can do about public safety. Do you know how many people are dying from COVID around the world. In Italy, which was one of the hardest hit countries, as you know, about eight people died per day, are dying per day. Canada, about six are dying. UK, about nine are dying. Germany, about 11 are dying. France, about 20 are dying per day. United States of America, 1,000. You want to do about something about public safety? Try doing your job. 1,000 people under your federal leadership are dying currently per day from COVID. You have the worst record on the globe in terms of leadership. You want to do something on public safety? That's what you can do. Uh, as far as this uh, statement, he's going to stop funding for New York City. He is not a, a king. He thinks he's a king, but he's not. He's a president. And there is a constitution and there are laws. Nothing that he knows anything about. Uh, but the federal budget is appropriated by law with conditions of funding by law. A lot of the funding went to the Department of Housing and Urban Development that I used to head. Uh, the, the statutes contain the funding conditions, and he can't override the law. Uh, I suspect it's more of a political statement that he's making than anything else. Uh, but uh, it's also illegal, what he's talking about. So... That's my response to the president. Let's take a couple of questions. 
And that was our uh, our governor earlier tonight in a what it was I guess he calls it a, a, te a teleconference. Uh, it's not exactly a a press conference, but it is a a, a teleconference. Uh, let me see here. We have one person waiting in our waiting room right now, so we'll um, um, admit him if he wants to come in. Uh, uh, we go, use Zoom, by the way, and if you don't know how to use Zoom, uh, just go over to gabnet.net, and over on the right-hand side of the page, on the right-hand side, uh, you will find... Uh, um, uh, uh, in about the middle of the right-hand column, a thing that says click here for Zoom. And you just click that, and that will put you through just like it put Charlie Wallace through to us. Hello, Charlie. How are you this so evening? Worthy of this right, Alex, great doing great. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. You know, what? There is wait, a wait, wait a minute. Where? Wait, where oh, wait a minute. I've got to, I've got to turn something hands. down here. Love I... Uh, uh, let me but see here. Uh, no, unmute site. Okay. And that's uh, muted, not muted. Where the hell is that audio coming from? My, um, Wait a minute. Hold on a second. It's coming from somewhere. Oh, I see where it's coming from. Here we go. Uh, let me just uh, get rid of it. There we go. I think we're fine now. Yeah. Okay. Hello there. How are you, uh, Charlie? Let me all. Let me Finally, it's not 100 degrees today. Yay. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Here's Robert Natali. Uh, hi, Robert. How are you? Alex, I'm fine. How are you? Who is more New York than Andrew Cuomo? No one. I mean, is that like whenever, you, you know, you never, if you're ever going to have the riot act read to you, mm -hmm. you don't want it read to you by a New Yorker. No. <laughs> okay. Because right. nobody does it better. You Moxie. Know. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, he he moved. Uh, he got out of here. Good, good riddance. I mean, you know, he yeah. just, he just <laughs> don't he, let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. Yeah, I mean, he really, he really gives it to Trump, and and justifiably so. I mean, when yeah. he got into that whole thing about Italy, who was hardest hit, has eight a day dying, mm -hmm. and Germany has eleven a day dying, and uh, France has it says six a day dying or whatever. The United States, 1,000 a day. And you say you're trying to be, uh, you're, for, you're for public safety? Well, that's yeah. the first thing you could get to attend to, but you, you haven't, you know. Um, uh, and I, I, the reason I decided to play that, uh, I was going to run this interview I did with Ronnie, which is usually 25 minutes, but I played Stephen Pearl first so that uh, he's only like 15 minutes and I could play that for you because I figured you you would enjoy that you know mm -hmm. so yeah so how are you all doing this evening uh, uh, any comments about what you just heard he said it all right I mean yeah. there isn't a thing he said that someone could dispute I really don't don't right. see it if it's true right right um, and he um, he, uh, when he came out with this thing about the reason he doesn't like New York is because New York never liked him. Exactly. You yeah. know, as long as he, was, as he was here, as Cuomo put it, he was thought of as a clown. Yep. A buffoon. A buffoon. And um, I don't know. You know, I get tired. I got to tell you, I get tired coming on here every night and talking about Donald Trump. You know? I'm, I've finally gotten Trump fatigue. Are any of you feeling Trump fatigue? Yeah, months ago. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Robert? How about you, Jeff? I have Trump fatigue in a sense. I'm just tired of his name. I'm tired of his face, his voice, his lies, his bullshit. But yeah. on the other hand, I, I think there's reason why it, we have to speak about it and speak about it often. We have to point out that there is no confusion in this upcoming election. Yeah. It really isn't. You know, a box of cheese would be a better candidate yeah. than Donald Trump. And that has to be hammered home by everyone who can see the light. I, I'm sorry. That's yeah. how it is. Yeah. Cool. Jeff? Yeah, but, you know, Robert, you get information. I'm not sure where exactly, but. We get a lot of uh, liberal information, so to speak. We consider it to be direct information, correct information. Mm -hmm. But if you look at Fox TV, 
it is crap. Mm -hmm. Well, it you know what? Terrible. Y y y and, yeah. and I know a lot of people who are so-called Republicans. They're morons. Can yeah. I can I respond to that? Go Jeff, ahead. Please? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Jeff, I I agree with you wholeheartedly. But what I would say back to that is that there are a lot of facts that are just incontrovertible. There are certain facts that are just inarguable. 186,000 Americans are dead. No one can argue that. In fact, if anything, you could argue that may be the, like a, a, a number that's been softened up. Yeah. 966 page report by the Senate Intelligence Committee is a matter of fact. You know, it's readable. It's there. It was done by a Republican led committee and says that Trump perjured himself and actually did collude with the Russians. Mm. Incontrovertible fact. What he did in Charlottesville was incontrovertible. It was a quote out of his own mouth. You know, I could go on and on and on. And it, there are certain facts that you just can't argue. What Fox has done a great job of is Fox has done a great job, I think, of spinning the arguments so that you forget the 186,000. You know, I've said it before, he's on plan W. He was going to run on the economy. Well, he can't do that. He, he was going to run on what he did for COVID. Well, that ain't going to work. He's down to plan W, which is to gin up this law and order bullshit right out of Nixon's playbook. Mm. And it the, even that isn't going to work. Even Nixon. No, it's not. Cuomo said it. He, he is now obeying the law. The budget exactly. by the U.S. Congress is the law, and he just he has said he's going to ignore the law. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is that even Nixon wasn't this draconian. I mean, mm -hmm. I hate to say that. You know, I, I often say, you know, uh, things. You know, just when you thought Nixon was the most terrible president we had, although I think Reagan was worse. Um, uh, you know, you, you, every time you think Trump's the worst, uh, you look back at these other people who you thought were terrible at the time, and now they don't seem so bad. No. And in, in the good. case of even Nixon, Nixon, uh, you know, Nixon had respect for the office. Yeah. He may have been a, a crook, but he had respect for the office. And, and this, this guy has absolutely no, re uh, you know, respect for the office. He feels it's, a, it, it's really like a free bank account he was given. Yep. You know? And, and it's, it's horrible what he thinks he can get away with. Well, what he does try to get away with, and there's a Republican Senate that's letting him get away with it. They're complicit, yep. mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I mean, this just goes on and on, and you just, you just, I, I, I the reason I don't want to see him get reelected is I just don't want to see his fucking fat face on television anymore. You here? You know that Mussolini <laughs> look he always has. You know that. You, you know what I'm talking about. That's a yeah. Mussolini look. I mean, uh, it, I'm just sick of it. I'm sick to death of it. And uh, I, I, I think it's, it's time that we, uh, you know, that we booted this guy out of office, and I hope we can do it. I, you know, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I think it looks good, but, it, you know, it looked good last time. Mm -hmm. And look what happened, you know. So I mean, what the hell? Uh, and has America learned its lesson? I don't think so. Even today, mm -hmm. now I don't know this to be a fact, but this was something reported on MSNBC. Mm -hmm. he, he supposedly spoke when he was in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Yeah. Spoke to a storekeeper whose store was burned out. Yeah. Well, MSNBC is reporting that the guy doesn't own that store anymore. No. He's a prior owner, yes. and the current owner wanted no part of talking to Trump. Well, that, that wasn't the Photoshop, was it? 
I yes. really don't know. I didn't hear the yeah. whole report. Well, it was the, but I heard it was the Photoshop because yesterday when this guy was saying, and you know, this we've had this Photoshop in our family for 125 years. I'm thinking well, they don't own it anymore. Yeah, except he sold it. Well, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> so you know, like even the little shit. Yeah. Is well, just what like, I thought about though, what? what I thought about when he said that was, hasn't anybody told you Photoshops are <laughs> yesterday's business? Yeah. yeah, you right. know, I mean, what do you what do you you do, you have one hour uh, photo? You, yeah. you develop them yeah. one hour now? Is that yeah. it? I got an instant photo. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, uh, something was smelled fishy about that. Uh, but I'll tell you something, and I I, I want to bring this up. I you know I got a, a note today from Patrick in which he was saying, well, did you see where Biden's going to come here? So I guess Trump wasn't so bad for coming here, right? And my attitude is, no, he was bad in going there because he was using the political climate and the election to uh, to get himself some publicity. And on the other see. hand, on the other hand, uh, he's doing the same thing. Yeah, and I don't know that I that states. I that I agree with Biden going there. Okay. Uh, uh, what, what do you yeah, think, Biden Robert? Biden will probably try and bring us together. Trump tried to split us well, apart. Well, uh, that being, let's separate that from what I was saying last night. I was saying what I had against it was he was using this political, using this as a political opportunity as part of his election, re-election for president, and that I didn't think this was the kind of thing you should use for political purposes. So if I don't believe in that where uh, uh, Trump is concerned, I certainly can't believe in it where, where Biden is concerned. W Robert? I agree with you on both counts, that they're yeah. both using it for political reasons. But yeah. let's reiterate a point that Charlie eloquently made last night. Yeah. Trump expressed no remorse where it came to Jacob Blake. He expressed no remorse for the two people who were shot and killed by the teenager. He did express sadness about the teenager himself who fired the weapon because he supported Trump. Now, let's listen closely when Biden gets there to how he handles it. And we'll criticize that as necessary. Yeah, but, I, but, if, but if I was going to be critical of Trump for being there for political advantage, okay, and using that town for his political campaign, then I kind of have to hold the, the Biden's feet to the same flame. No disagreement. Yeah, yeah. What do you th what do you th what are you thinking, Kevin? Any opinion on that? What I just said? No, uh, not really. I mean, I I saw what uh, you guys were talking about. The well, I didn't see it, but I heard it on the radio about um, going to that Photoshop and that guy, the guy that was in the photo that occupied the Photoshop now did not want him to come by but they got the owner of the photoshop to come by so it was the owner of the photoshop does he oh, carry well, the he carried the lease yeah i don't get the uh, oh he has the lease on it he I carried see. he he leased it to the guy that didn't want him to come but, by because but, the guy said yeah. i don't want any trouble i don't want trump around here i have no interest in talking to him and the yeah. guy that owns the, the shop that rents it to that guy said, I'll talk to you. Well, when they burned it down, right, uh, yeah. uh, what they burned down was actually the, uh, what can we call it, the, the financial property of the guy who's renting it as opposed yeah, to the physical. To, who they to, yeah, yeah. But the guy the, that was actually in it yeah. was the victim, yeah, and he didn't want to talk to him. Why didn't he want to talk to him? Did he say? Because he didn't want to deal with Trump. He didn't want. He didn't want any opportunity with Trump. Wow. wow. He basically said he didn't want a photo op happening in his place of business. Hmm. Yeah. And I wonder how Fox is spinning that tonight. You know. Oh, they'll find a way to do it. Yeah. Uh, that, that station's sure. out of control. Yeah. Yeah. Thank well, I'll, I'll tell you something about Fox. It's interesting. Jeff mentioned it. You, know, you go over to Fox and blah blah blah. It's like. You're going into another world. It is. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's entertainment. Y yeah, it's like you're going into another world. It's it's like it, it, what was it? Uh, Bizarro world. You ever read in DC Comics? You know where uh, uh, everything that is one way is really the other way. 
You know, up My is Seinfeld. down, down is up. Right? Seinfeld. Seinfeld, yeah, yeah. Seinfeld the yeah. world. Yeah. yeah. And they have, they have their token Democrats, and they just rip them up and talk over them and let them sit there and, and drain. I saw and that's all they do. It's really funny. Occasionally, I go over and watch Newsmax. And I watch, uh, uh, what's that other station, uh, uh, the one that Trump family bought into? Uh, OAN. Huh? OAN. OAN. OAN, OAN. Yes. yeah. And uh, I was watching, I think I think it was uh, Newsmax, and they had a guy on, and I went, God, this guy's a liberal. This guy's a lefty. And then they wouldn't let him talk. They just kept talking over everything he would yeah. say. He would start talking, and then they would start going into this long involved you know and i'm going well you know if you ha want to have the guy on have the guy on you know and and your your job is to back off you know so it was like last night i felt bad because patrick kind of felt reticent to be able to talk about how he felt about this <clears throat> and i don't want him to feel that way you know i right. want him to feel this is a safe place uh, to 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 come to and do this and and uh, not have to you know worry about it uh, but it, you know so uh, I like to try and make this a safe place where somebody on the the right side who I totally disagree with can have an equal shot you know yep. yes uh, Jeff uh, yesterday before the show mm -hmm. uh, I had uh, sent some emails between Patrick and myself Mm -hmm. uh, more personal stuff about himself, and and he liked what I was saying, and he he sent me a, a nice note, and I said, Patrick, why don't you come on the show again? Because we hadn't seen him for are a you, while. Are you talking for pa about Patrick? Patrick was on well, last night. I know, but before the in the afternoon, I asked him to come on the show. Yeah. But he's he he was on last week too, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, I know he was. But, yeah. but you know, yeah, he was a week ago. But before he, that, he only calls. He, he, he only calls about once, sometimes twice a week, and that's it. Yeah. You know? that's it. But so, uh, and I appreciate his his being part of the show. He has a take on things that I don't have, and you don't have. But he articulates them well, and uh, I I enjoy his. Uh, you know, so I, I, I felt bad last night when he said, well, I don't want to say what I really feel because you guys are going to hate me for it and blah, blah, blah. And I went, that's ridiculous. You know, don't don't worry about that. It's a safe zone that way. You know, the only thing I mind is if somebody comes in and is is interruptive, you know, and doesn't let other people talk and things like that. Then that does bother me no matter what your political opinion is. But, uh, hello, Mr. Neary. How are you this uh, fine evening? Like, like, like 20 minutes ago, all the internet just died. Really? So I'm on my phone. Yeah, I don't know. Every yeah, day, you so. know, I'm, I'm getting so tired. I got to tell you, I'm, uh, uh, technology is making me very weary. Ugh. You know, uh, today I'm just, for, and I'm here and I've got a bunch of, um, of hard drives, external hard drives that are on this computer because I've got a, a Mac Pro and they only have solid state memory so I've only got a terabyte of that so I have to have all my other and all of a sudden I lost all of them I don't know where how where they went why they weren't online I kept trying to do it and finally I just rebooted the machine they all came back you know but I mean it's it's crap like that you know that vexes me constantly and um, yeah you start spending hours on end trying to figure out what it is, and then it's not even any of your fault. Well, I mean, yeah. it could have been there was maybe a glitch in the USB system in the computer. That happens, you know, and everything jammed up. All of a sudden, they just disappeared. I didn't really do anything. I think I adjusted the monitor here, but that's not attached to any USB. But it's things like that. Every day, I'm putting out another goddamn fire, you know? <laughs> And, and and I I need to get out from underneath all this technology, you know. That's that's what I like about you know. I talk about the Monday show. What I like about the Monday show is that I simply 
go on Zoom, and I started up on Facebook through Zoom, and that's it. There's nothing else I have to do. Here I've got a, a switcher, and I've got my graphics, and I've got the da, 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 and then this goes out, and that goes out, and everything goes crazy, and I, you know, I'm, I'm tired of it. I just, I just want to sit here with a bunch of people I enjoy talking to, and have a pleasant conversation, like with Tony. She's talking to me. Good night. <laughs> she, she's talking to you. Let's. Let's tell people. Do you mean your your employer is trying to talk to you? My mother, yeah. You frost the flakes on the breakfast tomorrow. It's all day. I have no eggs. Do you make a Santa? All right, already. I close the lights. Gonna have it all dark like a vampire. Yeah. All right, I got the kitchen. Why your mother's there? Can she do something about the wallpaper? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mom, buy buy some new wallpaper. And by the way. Who has curtains like that and then blinds? You know, you either have a curtain or you have blinds, right? Am I right? Who's that me? Why do you have blinds in back of you and a curtain? That's hard. She thinks it's like, it's the, Becky's right. My mother's living like it's the 1950s. I'm telling you. It's curtains. And well, lights. I got news for you. Not only she is living like it's the 1950s, you're living like it's exactly. the 1950s. Exactly, and I like it too. That's the funny part. Yeah. Oh boy, yeah. Tell your mother to get get your mother to buy some new wallpaper. Come on, she's she she's, she's loaded. Good. She's got money. I mean, that's why you're she waiting didn't. around, anyways, because yeah, she's got the money. What? I'm trying to poke my sister and brother out of the will, and I can be the lone survivor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Now just get this name off, okay? And now, I'm, okay. Yeah, I'm joking. Start remodeling. Tell her you're going to remodel for her. Yeah. She actually thinks this is we would. Uh, this is the next room we want to get done. But she wants to put wallpaper back up. I'm telling you, you can't make this up. She stuck with it. It was a big dilemma. Just to, if, if this room, she thinks it's nice. Who does wall? Does anybody, lady next door comes does anybody do wallpaper anymore? Her I guess they Anna do. Anna does. I guess they do. But you know, yeah. you put too much wallpaper in a room and you get dizzy. <laughs> you know what now? <laughs> <laughs> You know, one night he's going to go, what? Drink. One night he's going to go, what now? He's going to leave the frame and you're going to hear a gunshot go off. <laughs> yeah, that but who's who shooting? Accomplices. Huh? We're, we're not sure who shot. Mom, him. I'm talking yeah, to my who? friends, Mom. I'm talking to my friends. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. That room is like so cold, forget about it. Really? Make sure the it's a hang is on sixty two. Oh look, 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 look. That's not your mother. That's not your mother. That's women in general. You know? It is. Uh you know, um uh, uh women uh Mar Marjorie but tonight it's only seventy eight degrees. She shit, goes no. into another room where it's a little hotter, and then she comes in the bedroom and goes, "We got to close the window. We got to close the door. We got to turn on the air conditioner." Cool. You know, I mean, I have to have the air conditioner on in here <clears> because <throat> with all this equipment, it can get pretty steamy. You know, and during the winter, it warms me up. You know, but um, women are beasts with air conditioners. Oh Am I right? Brian's looking at me. Am I right? No. No, my my. My phone, since I can't have the, the the gallery with everybody, I have it on whoever's speaking. And you're talking, and all of a sudden it goes to Tony, and he's not there. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, well, they, they started like you're you're saying before. They started, you know, all these evictions coming up now. They say like four forty million in, in evictions are are coming due. They showed like. Um, they showed Harris County. So I guess, like, is that near Houston or something? Yeah, Harris showing, County is uh, Houston. Yeah. Yeah, showing uh, uh, those, not, they're not cops, but what are they? They go in to do the evictions. And uh, yeah, yeah. then yeah. they froze them, I guess, later in the in the day. They, they start freezing them or something. I don't know. But, yeah, it was really well, sad. Well, you know something, like, though? You can go around evicting these people. But who are you going to replace in those evicted apartments? You know, I mean, you're being stupid. It's better to have somebody in the apartment live with the eviction thing. And I don't understand this eviction thing completely. But from, from what I understand is once this whole crisis has gone away, people are going to have to pay back that money. It isn't like, the you know, it's being forgiven. Yeah. You know. 
So, so they, they get, you know, that's going to happen. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't, really? you know, I don't worry about eviction because I'm not paying rent. So, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I know but it's an old is, story. What? It, oh, so is, Charlie, is it Harris County, is that like, is that a like lower income area? Because they are saying like 200, 200 evictions a week they're going to start doing. No, it's a, it's a gigantic city. So, yeah, there are low income areas. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's Houston, it's Houston, Texas. It's a, it's the whole city of Houston, which, by the way, if I'm not mistaken, is one in land size, one of the largest uh, cities in the United States. Yeah. Uh, the, do you know what the largest city? Chicago. No, okay, you know, no, you know, so, you know what the largest city in the United States is in land uh, size? Oh, size. Yeah. Size. Oklahoma City. Oh. Oklahoma okay. City. Yeah. I think Houston is like number two. Hmm. Yeah, you can drive all day and still be in Houston. Here, wow. here was the deal. Oh they, when gosh. I first went to Houston, they mm -hmm. made a big deal out of the fact that they were uh, uh, building a new airport, a new international airport. And it was, I think it was going to be called Hobby Airport. It later became George W. Bush or George Bush International Airport. But uh, I said, okay, well, listen, I want to get on the plane because I'm going to go back to San Francisco for a weekend. And so we get in a car. We drive 75 miles yep. Yep. to yep. the airport. And that was on the edge of town. Yeah, you can literally drive 100 miles without leaving the Houston city limits in a straight line. Yeah. See, really? yeah. Oh in, New York city, in New York City, you can drive a whole day to get from 8th Avenue to 7th Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but for, Tony, am I right? <laughs> Oh yeah, I, mean, I don't drive, but my brother hates. Don't driving. go cross town midday. When We're my brother goes into the city, sometimes faster. to work overnight, it's all right. But when he's got to take the car, in. for entirely yeah. different reasons, however. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, this, oh yeah. This town is, uh, but uh, um, you know, I, I but I don't know what's going to happen. You know, when the eviction thing is all over with, because there are just a lot of people without who lost jobs in in this. Yeah. And you know, Trump goes, "Oh, the economy is terrific. Look at the stock market." Yeah, the <clears> stock <throat> market just got back up to about where it was when the bottom fell out because of COVID. But who's getting rich off of that? About five companies, and that's it. It's like you know, Apple had a good time, and Amazon had a good time, and so on. That's why the money went up uh, again on that. You know. But that stock market has nothing to do with people being out of work and not having money in their pocket. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's a casino. It's a casino. Well, it is. But mm -hmm. th 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 that's not the case. Don't tell me that the stock market, because the stock market is good, that means the economy is good. If I people, mean, still, if 30 million, million people, people if yeah. 30 million people are out of work, those are 30 million incomes that aren't being spent somewhere. And uh, you can't tell me that that's a good economy. Uh, and um, uh, I, I mean, I, I wish it. I wish it were tied to that, but it isn't. By the way, Bree is actually on the chat room while he is uh, t uh, on here with us, right, Bree? Well, yeah. You, you have to turn your microphone on, Bree. Yeah. I mean, I only said hi. Yeah, I know, but I just noticed that you were, you were there. Uh, oh, and Scott Boddicker is there. Alex, this is a political campaign or not? Clinton was criticized for not going to Wisconsin. What? What? She was in 2016. Yeah. She oh, in 2016. Know. Yeah. And she lost Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah she lost uh -huh. Wisconsin. Um, but uh, uh, I just, you know. Um, um, I don't know. I just I, I I've been very I've been very depressed lately. I mean, just everything about this is just getting me. Why? Huh? Well, I'm depressed for two reasons. Number one, staying in the apartment depresses me. I last two days I've gone out for a walk. You ready for that? And I Good. found and I found it was a hard it was hard to walk. Okay. Because, you haven't been because I haven't walked in a while. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know. So I'm going to try and get out. I'm going to try and do an hour walk every single day. All right? To get Are you going to come back? 
I just keep walking straight every hour. Of day. I'm just going to, I'm going to start walking and just keep going. You know, yeah, and have half hour and come back Marjorie hour. say, where, where the hell is Alex? Hello, <laughs> hello, other Brian. How are you this evening? Uh, not too bad. Why? What's wrong? No, it's, no just another day. Same, basically the same shit, just a different day. What, what do you mean the same shit? I mean, in your personal life or just in general with the, the world? Well, I guess you could say that you could apply that to both uh, A and B. But yeah. Yeah. So. What happened to the happy devil may care Brian Ludwig <laughs> we used to know? Uh, huh, devil may care. That's, <laughs> that's <fine. laughs> uh, Yeah. Uh, just died along with uh, <laughs> died along with uh, the, the notion that uh, I guess there exists two viable end of coat co-independent independent, uh, political parties. So. Well, that's been your mantra for the last, every time yeah. you've called for the last couple of weeks. I mean, is it you're there's, just bothered there's by... some attempt at this thing called a people's party. Yes. But I, I, I think that that's just, to, that would ensure Trump's victory. Yeah. Well, Split up. Maybe we need to spend through hell to see what true heaven looks like. Huh? Well, I mean... Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I know what you're saying, and I know how, you're fee how you feel, Brian, because I used to feel exactly the same way. But I've since become a realist. Right, Robert? That you, yes, you, I, you, I, the that, way I see it, yeah. Yeah, that when you're being attacked by an enemy, uh, you have to go to the, to the most people that you can find who are going to ward off that enemy. And mm -hmm. that if you just say, well, I'm, you know, I'm going to go... In, in, in an election, I'm going to go vote for the third party. Well, you know, okay. So you're really handing, I think in this case, you'd be handing Trump a victory. Well, you won't you know, personally. I mean, what you do personally, if you're the only one who does that, go ahead and do it if it makes you feel good. But uh, uh, if a lot of people feel like you feel, uh, we're going to be back in the same shape we're in. You do yeah. realize, speaking of a lot of people, that last remark you made, you do realize that over 100 million people didn't vote in 2016. Well, so uh, uh, we, we have a very bad record in this country of voting. I mean, you know, uh, a lot of other countries have very high numbers. 80% go out and vote and so on. Here in the United States, I think we only get about, what, 40% voting or something like less that? Than, yeah, it's less than 50. Less yeah. Than yeah, and that's shameful. You know, I think in um, in Australia, isn't it against the law not to vote? Yeah, you have to, by law you have to vote, but you pay a fine. You pay a fine if you don't vote. Uh, I would hate to think that we have to do that to people. And I and I again agree with you, Brian, in this respect. For years, I didn't vote. I felt it did me no good. No matter who I voted for, they always lost anyway. You know, and so I had that, that kind of attitude. But as well, I, I wouldn't. Say I don't like it. Uh, people who say they don't vote, I still don't. Uh, I still am uncomfortable with those who yeah. say they won't vote at all. I mean, there there are such things as alternate parties, as Jack Bishop calls them, or write-ins. You know, or, or but also. Well, okay, validated. so what 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 are you going to do? You what are you going to do this year? Who is who are you supporting? Probably the least of all evils for for me right now would be Howie Hawkins. Who? Howie Hawkins. Howie Hawkins, Green Party. Green Party? Oh, okay. All right. Okay. But I can tell you, Alex, I'm still sticking by my Trump prediction, and I know how he's going to do it. He's going to cheat. Yeah. He's, he's already set it up so we can know. On the night of the election, the in-person casting votes, he's going to win that. And you're going to see a lot of red all over the map. And then there's going to be a lot of, well, we still have a lot of mail ballots. we got to count all that. And Trump's going to say, no, no. I won based on this. That's it. Yeah. End of discussion. No more discussions. And all the legal stuff, whatever. We'll hire as many lawyers as they need. And then it's, that's how he's going to take it. Well, he is setting up uh, a, a, a reason to question the election. He, he's already started that. I mean, every time he it's says, well, this is going to be the most uh, illegal voting, blah, 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 if we do it by mail and so on and so forth. And uh, he's going to, you know, he's going to yell and scream that. So, you know, he's doing it because later on 
he's going to turn around and uh, and and uh, you know uh, uh, go to the Supreme Court with it, and he's going to bitch and moan. I mean, even if he loses by a ton, just by a ton, okay, it, it's not going to matter. He's still going to going to go and protest it. He's going to go do legal actions. Well, and the thing is, is it doesn't matter if he gets more if he, if Biden gets more votes in California and New York, you know, and runs up the the totals. Hillary Clinton did that. That doesn't work. It's there are specific places where he just has to make sure that the mail-in ballots have his name on them or don't or aren't counted, you know, and that's the play right there. You just go to a couple of states, those small little states in the backwater areas that mm. don't have very much. You send in your legal team from New York, and they're going to, I'm telling you, this is how it goes down. I was thinking Pennsylvania might be one of them, Brie, but uh, I don't know. Uh, but also, I'm not surprised by what you're saying. I, I don't, I, I'm not, I won't be surprised if Trump uh, when's the real election either? Well, and, I, and I'll tell you why it works. I'll tell you why it works. The reason why Gore conceded and the reason why Bush won was precisely that. What happens is if there is an impression on the night of the election and that impression carries through the next day or two, that impression sort of has a way of locking in a rally around the flag because many, most people want uh, to have the stability versus the chaos. So if it's the illusion, right. So if it's mm -hmm. Trump and then it's all, we just go through this for another four years and we know what he says, then, you know, people might go for that. But if it's, well, we don't quite know and it's chaos, we're going to have legal issues, that, that, that upsets business more, you know, than the, the, the guy jumping around who says a lot of crazy things. I would say it's the other very... I would say the other variable of play here, though, Bree, is that uh, unlike before in 2000, here in 2020, we're faced with a global pandemic as well as uh, riots that are comparable to those I'm being told from those in the 1960s, as yep. well as uh, Great Depression era level statist labor statistics. So uh, those all seem to make a perfect trifecta or trifecta of, uh, you know, okay, uh, hostile conflict and virtual implosion. I think Bree's wrong about the in voting. I think he, he's not even going to come close with the people to vote in person. Uh, if you listen Trump to, voters uh, will go. Trump voters will go. They go to his. They go to Trump his rallies. It's just don't care. Biden voters. Biden voters aren't going to go out. That are going to vote. Do not. I don't think Biden voters will risk their lives <laughs> as much. They vote in the hailstorm. Do not underestimate this man. Hmm. Well, they go to his. Seat. Just look at the rallies. They go to his rallies knowing they could die, and they go. And they think do die. That. Many of them do die. Yeah. And there you go. Do you know that Facing already? Heart, I think uh, he gave a speech the other day at the White House, and already some like something like yeah. 25, 30 people have come down with COVID. Yeah, Herman Cain won't be voting for him. Well, of course, Herman Cain won't be voting for him. As I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and technically, I think Herman Cain was murdered by Donald Trump. Yeah. I mean, he probably said, Herman, show up to my rally. And by the way, don't wear a mask. You know, that would look bad. If you, it would be bad optics if you, if you wore a mask. And when he died, he just said, thoughts and prayers. What do you mean? <laughs> um, gee, uh, gee, could it have been because he was at my rally? And it was like 14 days later that he died? Could that be? Uh, Stochastic involuntary manslaughter. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And I think I don't think Trump has to tell his people not to wear a mask. They mm. know. Yeah. They know to be in line with him, to be his BFF, to hang out with them. They don't wear a mask. Well, many of them still think it's a hoax, but it's yeah. fake. Uh, I've, I've had I've had pu pu purely intelligent people say to me, "Do you think it's a hoax?" I mean, uh, Larry Bubbles Brown one day said this to me. Do you think it's a hoax? I mean, he, he was asking me sincerely because he wanted mm -hmm. to know if it was a possibility. And I said, no, it's not a hoax. This is the real deal. Because, I mean, I was here in New York, you know. You couldn't tell us it was a hoax. Otherwise, where were all those dead people going, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and so he said, okay. But a lot of people, their immediate feeling is, oh, it's overblown. It's a hoax. But how much, you know, there are 1,000 people dying a day. 
how is that in anybody's mind a hoax? <clears throat> you know, and, it's a hoax. Where did one hundred eighty-five thousand bodies come from? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, not all of them died of COVID. Yeah. They had other <laughs> things like uh, they were fat and so on. Yeah, those are called comorbidities, and without those comorbidities, they'd still be alive. But they, they you know. They had they had those comorbidities, and sure, you die. You don't die of COVID itself. You die of complications no. from COVID. So you know, uh, but uh, how uh, you know how much de more denial do we have to go through in this country? Just look at it. The rest of the world, five people here. Seven people there, 11 people in Germany a day, 1,000 a day in the United States. Now, admittedly, we're a bigger country, but not that much bigger that we have 1,000 and uh, Italy, which is, says things are not good right now, have five deaths a day. Is Italy... Uh, let's see here. Five goes into a thousand. How many times? Anybody know quickly? Two hundred. Two hundred. Is is Italy two hundred times smaller than the United States? No. Nope. No. Nope. I don't think so. You know. <laughs> so I mean, we're doing a crappy job. And part of it. Look, I'm gonna forget about Trump for a second. You know, there's part of me that goes, Trump inherited this. You know, this happened, and then he he's he's to be found guilty of not dealing with it, okay, but he didn't create it, all right? Um, but, you know, handed this, something should have been done about it. But the th two things we have going against it, and the biggest one, I think, is the American public, who is so goddamn fucking selfish that they yes. don't know how to put a mask on, they don't There's know how to stay right there, What? There's your reason, right? What you just said. There's your reason right there as to why we're having it so much worse than these other countries. We're so self-absorbed, yeah. so self-centered. We have yet to disband the delusion, illusion that uh, rugged individualism and do it for yourself and fuck the other guy ism works. It does not work. In the, fact, it's killing us. The, on, the only thing that is going to save our lives is people caring about other people. It's really what it's all about. And we don't know how to do that. We become so selfish and That's so self-absorbed. Look, look at these fucking <laughs> college students. Are they stupid? You know, look at, look, yeah, how, how, if, if they're not supposed to be stupid. They got into a college. And if they're going for an MBA, don't expect them to be selfish. You know. Yeah. I mean, The spikes that we've had mm -hmm. have been the Memorial Day weekend, 4th of July, and here we come up to Labor Day weekend, like Fauci says, these are where the spikes are, and here we're coming up again. And what are we going to do? You're going to see people over here at Lake Havasu. You're going to see people, all their boats up in the Delta in Sacramento, all partying and, and all hanging out together with no masks. And it's just going to be like this big spike again. Yeah. Not to mention school and college openings. Yes, mine yeah. included, which will be Tuesday. <laughs> I'm looking forward oh, to it. Oh, you, you, you drive a... a, a School bus, right? That is correct. Yes. And so you're going to have all these little oh, petri dishes in back of you on the bus coughing on you? Uh, yeah, I got my. Obviously, I'll be wearing my mask the whole time, but that's not going to do. That'll only do so much. I'd say if you're driving a school bus, I'd wear a hazmat suit. Yeah. I, mean, I could drive one comfortably wearing one. I think I would, but. <laughs> yeah. Eh, whatever. I have, like, you speak of devil may care. I kind of have a double may care on a personal level on myself. If I get the virus, I get the virus. I'm <laughs> going to do yeah. wear the mask and everything, do the social distancing, which I do both. Well, how old? Are, how how, how, how old, Brian? How old are you? I'm 38. 38. So you're you're not you're in a semi risk group, but not heavy risk group. But here's a here's a question that uh, I haven't really read in any of the articles about the coronavirus, but I mean. And I know I'll preface this, uh, you know, uh, Bree is not a doctor. Don't take medical advice from Bree. What I'm saying is, do people get exposed to it and they beat it, they, they don't catch it? Like, I'm exposed to the cold and the flu all the time, but I don't catch it. That's so, right. 
uh, if you get exposed to COVID-19, do you 100% get it? Or can your body... Uh, I don't uh, think we... I, I, well, let's let's go over to... Uh, to uh, don't ask me. Brian, don't ask because me. Because if, if it's a virus... <laughs> I would say... If it's a virus, well, wait, what we know hold about on a that second. Hold is, on a second. I think that I can give an answer, and it would be the one that Brian would have to give. We don't know. You know, we just don't so, know. In the absence of not knowing, mm -hmm. I mean, can we fall back on the fact that it's a virus and humans have had viruses before? Some we I want, can defeat. Yes, but yeah. some they are even not. Say now, they say now humans can defeat HIV This is on a, their Okay, own, hold on a second. Charlie's waving his hand. Charlie? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yes, different, everybody's immune system is different. So you can get a bug. You can have the virus all throughout your body and not have any symptoms. But that does not mean that you don't have the bug in your body. So you can make somebody else sick. Okay. Just and, because you are not I sick think, doesn't mean you don't I, have the bug. Well, let me right. Add, and my theory is, is that we have all bugs all the time, and they're just waiting for us to, to be weaker. Yeah, but... When but, you don't but, sleep, when you don't yeah. eat... But this bug is a little more pernicious than the rest. This is a uh, right. this is a super bug. Yeah, very fast spreading. Yes. Yeah, the way in which it spreads, uh, the the lethality of it, much different than your normal flu that you get. And uh, you know, I went and I got my uh, my flu shot. Okay, mm -hmm. so I probably won't get any of those flus. But you know, there isn't a shot yet for this. Uh, Kevin, you I noticed that you're on the the uh, the uh, chat room tonight while you're doing this. I love your being able to uh, do two duties at the same time. What are they talking about on the chat? Because I don't have time to read it. Oh, Matt was just asking about the Stanley Cup playoffs. Oh, okay. So. Are the Penguins in there? Yeah. Alex read that and he still didn't understand what it was. <laughs> I'm way out of it, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kevin says, I don't know. Want Vegas out? Uh, I guess take, uh, like to see the bolts. I don't know. I don't know what you just wrote there, Kevin. Well, I, I and I have a sports Vegas. Emmy. Let me, let me let you know that. Okay. There we go. The Vegas is go. out. And uh, I kind of like Tampa Bay to win, but. I really don't care because the tournament's kind of weird this year. Oh, okay. weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Marjorie is now watching uh, the the tennis. I haven't asked her yet. <clears throat> she doesn't seem to be watching it as much as she usually does. Too early. Well, yeah, Venus went out the first that one. Uh, what what happened? Here with I am, rock you like a Herman Cain. What what <laughs> happened with Venus? Venus went out in the first round. Wow. Wow. First time in twenty two. 22 attempts or 22 times she's been in it. Crazy. Wow. Hey, go, go tell that to Marjorie. She'll be pissed off if she doesn't see it, watch it already. She was, <laughs> no, she hasn't said a word about it. And I, you know, she, yesterday she comes into me and she goes, How do I get ESPN Plus? Because last <laughs> year we got it and at the end of it we canceled it because I don't want to subscribe to ESPN Plus for a year on my account. And, uh, I said, okay, well, we'll just subscribe to ESPN Plus for the next month, and you can watch it. And so we got ESPN Plus. And every time I go in there, she's watching some show on Netflix called Grand Hotel. It's got like 84,000 episodes over 70 seasons, and she's watching it, right? My God. But I don't see, her, wa called? I don't see her watching the tennis. Come on. I've, it's five mm. five ninety five a month for crying out loud. <laughs> what do you think I am? Made of money? Yeah, it just started. Hey, thinking of money you saved on tickets this year. Yeah, well, she got a yeah. hat. You know what? She got, I had it on last night. She got a, every year she gets me a hat when she goes out there. Well, she couldn't go out there, but they're selling the hats online. I know. So yeah. she, the other night, I think it was Monday, yeah, Monday, she said to me, do you want a hat? I said, yeah. She said, what color? I said, white, because I don't have any in white. And she, uh, she said, oh, okay, fine. And she orders it. Yesterday, she says, here's your cap. Came in one day. Nice. Wow. You know. Yeah. Jumping no, on that money. No COVID excuse on that one. Oh. You know. Yeah. <laughs> 
I, uh, because we live we live in the days of COVID plausible uh, deniability, you know. Yes, uh, uh, John. So did you hear uh, the CDC sent out letters to all the states saying um, be prepared for vaccines uh, to be ready. So have your systems all set up by November 1st. So <laughs> there's no fucking chance they're going to have a vaccine no. for by November 1st. But why are they doing that? You know, it's oh, got some something. November 1st. Jeez, I wonder. <laughs> yeah, That's right. Exactly. And I brought you a vaccine. It's great. The November, it's the best. Oh, oh, yeah. Big, beautiful. Oh, look, you. Big, beautiful vaccine. It'll be beautiful. attached to your voting card. Yeah. Yeah. Let me explain to you. With Trump's signature. Let me explain to you why these things are happening. Uh, Why all of a sudden is something that's positive for Trump saying, hey, November 1st, a couple of days before the election, we're going to have a vaccine available. Uh, Why do they say that? Well, the appointee to the CDC, isn't he a Trump appointee? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. And all these appointees that he's made aren't permanent they're all acting Mm -hmm. which means it's like the apprentice he can fire them any moment he wants to so they do whatever he wants that's kind of like a reflection of the american workforce though when you think about it yeah yeah lack of permanence lack of transparency uh able to be used and disposed of like an expendable tampon or diaper Mm -hmm. at will will employment Mm -hmm. yeah yeah. So anyway, so and and Jeff, as as an older guy, how are you you you, you feeling okay about things? Oh, um, well, uh, physically, yes. I mean, mentally. Eh, yeah. See, nice. I'm going through a whole thing where I've got to change my uh, uh, my a... union decided they were going to get out of the insurance business, and they oh. created a whole new situation where we have to go do this thing called. SAG via it's called and we go and they you can you have a choice of any number of plans that you can do and so on so since my wife's company is paying for it we're just going to get the best of everything mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. uh, which probably will have about the same as we have now only we won't have all the co-pays that we had on the other one but I mean they just left us stranded out here and, yeah. and so we talked to them in October and they will sculpture a plan for us, okay? They have a thing you called Medicaid. Look at, hmm? at other things, other options for yourself. Well, the Medigap, there's a thing called Medigap that will take care of most of the cost. Very little, uh, you yes. know, co-pays, very little right. uh, mi- minimums at the beginning of the year. Um, uh, also, I guess we can get good prescription coverage i mean but it's it's but but still we like the plan we had it was it was fine you know only ran about two thousand a year for the two of us and now we don't know what this is going to cost and they're pulling it right out and they're pulling it out from me at a time when i need my medical coverage okay because uh i you know maybe i won't get anything else beside the cancer that i had maybe that's gone away but i still got to keep seeing doctors about it you know so, uh, you know, that's something else we got to talk about is, is health care in this country and doing better at getting health care yeah. to everybody. You were at single payer. Huh? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, single payer is, is an easy idea. Um, uh, is Biden it, wants nothing to do with it, but, any more than Trump does. Well, I, Biden, I don't think it has said he doesn't want some form of, he want, what he wants to do is improve on Obamacare. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I I don't think Hopefully he's. He can improve. I don't think he said he's against single payer. He's just not he for single payer. He's not against it. He's just practical because he knows he couldn't get it done at this mm-hmm. point. You know, with he's this Congress, on with well, this Congress, uh, yeah. he just couldn't get it done. You, you know, you got to. He said he would veto it. If the House yeah. and Senate sent him a bill, he would veto it. He is fucking against it. Yeah. Yes, why he is. said that? Really? Yes, he yeah. said that. Has he ever given a good reason why he is so vehemently against it? Nope. I think it's because he gets money from the health insurance companies. 
Yep, they both do. Both sides do. Yeah. Hmm. That's the only reason to be against it, because it's cheaper. Even the Koch brothers said it was cheaper. Well, they spent billions on a study that proved that it would save trillions of dollars over 10 years well, well, what's the to difference? go to single payer. What's the difference between single payer and Medicare for all? Medicare is a kind of single payer. There are other kinds of single payer. I yes. always thought it was just semantics that was the difference. I, I I think it may be semantics because that's yeah. really what I've always said is that hey Medicare for everybody it's just that's it Medicare, Medicare is already set up all you got to do is add names to it when you turn 65 your name gets added we even have a process for adding names yeah. we could do it tomorrow right right well but I, you still have huh do it 20 percent as you you've talked about ad nauseum on the show Alex yeah. uh, you still uh, under the current system when you are uh, eligible for medicare you still have that 20 percent code well that that's what i was talking about with this uh, my union and their their plan it's the supplemental oh, okay. it's that other 20 percent i'm not worried about the medicare part of it they take care of the 80 percent but i think the medicare should take care of 100 percent. what why 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 do they only do 80 percent it doesn't it doesn't make any sense is it going to wind up Pfizer doesn't like that Blue Cross Blue Shield doesn't like that. But it's always been, it's always been like that from the very beginning when Medicare first came out. That which was the was... compromise they had to do. Right. Oh. Because course, the health insurance companies were against Medicare to start with. Of course they there's are. A, there's another factor that I don't think gets talked about enough. This isn't to say I'm, in, I'm standing in this corner, mm -hmm. but a lot of people took health benefit packages with their employer in lieu of salary. Yes. And now what they're yeah. upset about is that that negotiated package that they took in lieu of additional ah, yes. salary yeah. is being wiped away. I'm not saying I'm for that because I was a person who negotiated higher health benefits in lieu of salary. They didn't want to pay fucking teachers ever. Well, do you remember so the time? Effect, if yeah. I were still working, there would be a part of me that would be chapped a little that I sold my benefits down the river. Do you follow? Like, yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember well, a time when you went to a job and you applied for it? And in order to make it give you an incentive to work for their company. They said, oh, and we've got a great health plan. And they paid for the whole yeah. thing. They just gave you this, this medical plan. Right. Well, as years went on, all of a sudden, I, I think I got out of being hired by a station and having contracts with stations and things like that. And so I took care of my own insurance. And I come out the other side of it. I go to work for somebody like uh, a Sirius XM. And they go, oh, yeah, we got a great health plan. It's going to cost you $200 a month for you and your wife. And I'm going, what? You know, wasn't that wasn't that what what part of the package was that you know? But I guess it wasn't. You, know. you think that started when we were under the delusional impression that we're part of a global economy and we started competing? No, with I, like think, Asian, I, I, I think I think it ha I think it happened when to begin with insurance medical insurance companies at one point weren't allowed to make a profit. Right. They were nonprofit organizations. And at one, yeah, I think under Reagan, maybe somebody like that, they became yeah, profit-making, and all of a sudden, it started costing more and more and more. That's where we made our big mistake. Yeah, so, you know. Reagan's changed that, too. Yeah, I, but I, I uh, you know, I just remember those days, as you probably do, Robert, where, hey, that was just something they gave you. Hey, come work for us. Oh, okay. And by the way, we're giving you a health plan, too. You can get that as part of the package. Well, in a lot of cases, we would try to seek like 10% over three years contract. And mm -hmm. they would say, we can't afford that, but here's what we'll do. We'll give you 5% over three years, but we'll mm -hmm. boost your health benefits. Okay, great. But now, in effect, if the nation wipes out those corporate health benefits, you've just lost 5% of your salary agreeing in good faith I'm not saying I feel that way, but to say, oh, well, might be a little on the cynical side <laughs> if it doesn't affect you. It will affect those that, that have that situation. Hey, listen, we've uh, we've kind of run out of time here. It's been a nice evening once again uh, with Charlie Wallace and uh, Robert uh, talking to us and Jeff and John Larkin out there in San Francisco and over there in Queens with his mother's wallpapers, Tony. And, of course, uh, Kevin, thank you. Always nice having you here, Kevin. Bree, thank you for being here. Brian Neary, 
keep making those little test kits. And um, uh, 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 Brian, good seeing you again here tonight as well. Why don't all of you give a big wave goodbye and I'll wave back at you, okay? There we go. There goes our citizen panel, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, they're off and finished. And the next citizen panel will be assembling over there uh, with uh, Jack Bishop. And you'll do that using Skype, okay? In the meantime, I'm going to get the you-know-what out of here. And uh, I'll see you again tomorrow night at uh, 1030, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And be safe out there and wear a mask, okay? Please. See you later. Bye, everybody. <laughs>